welcome back to the Friday Q&A. It is getting hot out, summer is uh, fast approaching. So I thought for today's Q&A, it would be appropriate to focus on all of your questions about sunglasses for protecting our eyes and the skin around our eyes against the damaging effects of ultraviolet light from the sun. And many of you asked me questions about what the different manufacturer claims on sunglasses mean and what you should be looking for in terms of giving you the best protection. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a dermatologist and my YouTube channel is largely fun vlogs of my life as well as a lot of skincare focused content, skincare Q&As, skincare product reviews, and skincare routine. So if this type of thing is of interest to you, then stick around for all of the fun. Now, if you have watched any of my videos, you know how important at this point it is to protect your skin from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation that come from the sun. Uh, but it's also equally important that we protect not only the skin around our eyes, uh, but our eyeballs themselves. Uh, Long-term exposure to ultraviolet light, our li lifetime exposure of ultraviolet light from the sun, uh, does have major consequences on the eye and the eye health. There are a variety of growths that can occur on the eye as a result of cumulative exposure to ultraviolet light. These growths can be both cancerous and non-cancerous. However, non-cancerous growths in the eyes are very problematic still because they can compromise your vision depending on where they're located. So important to protect your eyeball health from those. Long-term cumulative ultraviolet radiation exposure from the sun also contributes to an increased risk of cataracts developing in the eyes. So we need to be protecting our eyeballs in addition to our skin from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation. First and foremost, you always want to select sunglasses that make the statement that they block 99% or 100% of ultraviolet radiation. I think one of the things that is most conceptually difficult for us to, to appreciate is that oftentimes I think uh, as consumers, we are under the impression that visible light is ultraviolet light. And so we think that if things are dark, are darker or shady or gray, that there is less ultraviolet radiation. And that's actually not the case whatsoever. And if you've watched any number of my videos, you hopefully have learned that at this point. That shade, that, that gray, that dark, that tint does not necessarily protect you from ultraviolet radiation, okay? Ultraviolet radiation is the radiation that comes from the sun that we don't actually see, but that damages our skin and our eyes. Now, plain glass itself in lenses can protect a tiny, tiny bit against some wavelengths of ultraviolet light, but not all, and it certainly is not comprehensive enough protection. So you need to seek lenses that make the disclaimer that they offer 99 or 100% UV radiation protection. Many other manufacturers will instead say that they their, their lenses afford UV absorption up to 400 nanometers. That means the same thing as 99% or 100% UV protection. So it means the same thing, so you could also look for that. So while the coated lens can offer 99 to 100% UV protection from ultraviolet light that is directed into the eye front frontwards on, um, really what you have to be aware of, however, is that Ultraviolet light can still come in through the sides and hit the eye, it can come in from the top and hit the eye, and it can come in from the bottom and hit the eye. So the, the frame that you select is really, really important, okay? The recommended frame are really the wraparound types that will give you more protection on the sides. Um, and it is also recommended that you not solely rely on your sunglasses, but you also, particularly when walking across a parking lot, for example, you also don a broad brimmed hat to give you to give you that coverage on the top. Okay, unless you have those sunglasses that you wear when you when you get your eyes dilated, and I mean, let's be honest, that's not the majority of us rocking those. You might, uh, but it's not the majority of us. So putting on a hat when you, at least when you go across the parking lot or outside is another way to kind of 
boost the protection from your sunglasses. It is highly encouraged. In addition to the wraparound frame, the size size matters. The bigger the frame, the more protection you're gonna you're gonna get. It's gonna offer more protection, not only for the eyeball itself, but also for the skin around the eyes, the eyelids, the sides of the eyes. The skin around the eyes, the eyelids, the, the skin right here, the sides of the eyes, these are locations on the face where skin cancers commonly arise. We don't, we often neglect putting sunscreen there, particularly if sunscreen kind of stings a little bit. Um, and we often forget to put it there. And if you wear tiny, tiny frames, tiny, tiny sunglass frames, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're still getting exposure in those areas. So big frames, getting your sunscreen up around the, the all the skin around the eyes, uh, and wrap around and wearing the hat, that's really going to give you the best sort of sun protection package as far as not only the eyeball health itself, but also the skin around the eyes. Very, very important. Ultraviolet radiation from the sun is not visible light. You don't see ultraviolet radiation. You see visible light. So bright light is visible light, not ultraviolet radiation. Not the same thing as what contributes to the formation of skin and eye tumors and skin aging and impairing eye health. So that being said, the color of the lens does not matter as far as offering protection against ultraviolet radiation. In other words, darker lenses are not better than a light, lighter, lighter lenses. Uh, it, it's merely the ultraviolet radiation coating on the lens itself that's giving you that, that good protection. So that's important to understand as a consumer um, when you're selecting sunglasses. You may like darker, darker tinted lenses, that's fine, that may be your aesthetic, but it's not giving you more UV protection. In addition to darkness not making a difference, the actual color of the lens itself does not make a difference in terms of ultraviolet radiation protection. However, the color of the lens can, um, in certain situations, help your eye see certain things a little better, but it has no impact on ultraviolet radiation coming to your eyes. Certain colors of lenses may help increase the contrast a little bit for purposes of playing sports like golf or baseball, but for everyday use and for the purposes of ultraviolet radiation protection, the color makes no difference. Then the other question that I get a fair amount about is should we be selecting polarized sunglasses? Is that better for um, UV protection? And no, the answer is no. Polarized lenses um, help to reduce glare. And glare is basically a light that is reflected, visible light that is reflected and scattered and doesn't focus well in the eye. And by putting a polarizing lens, um, by putting a polarizing filter on the on the sunglass, it helps to it helps to get those scattered uh, uh, wavelengths of light, visible light, kind of going in the same direction to to help reduce that glare. However, polarized sunglasses do not actually reduce all types of glare. They're, they're really most helpful for reducing horizontal glare. Horizontal glare is glare that comes from a shiny, glossy surface, like a body of water, for example, or if you're ever driving in the distance and there's uh, you, you see glare on the street, but they don't reduce vertical glare. So glare from a glossy magazine that you're looking at uh, front on is not gonna be reduced by polarized sunglasses. There's also glare that can occur from fluorescent lights and while polarized glasses don't don't affect that, gl glasses that sunglasses that offer 100% UV protection actually will will uh, you know as a, as an added perk will reduce gl some of the glare from fluorescent bulbs as well uh, because they fall into the wavelengths of light where fluorescent glare. Uh, glare from fluorescent bulbs becomes a factor, uh, namely around uh, 340 to 360 nanometers. Another claim that uh, sunglass manufacturers will make and that you'll see is that their lenses are ground and polished. And uh, non-prescription glasses that are ground and polished, that is done to increase the quality of the lens. 
However, if you're selecting non-prescription glasses that are not ground and polished, it does not, it's not going to hurt your eyes. So that's not a necessary feature of a non-prescription uh, sunglass. Then another, then another manufacturer claim that you'll see is impact resistant. So all sunglasses on all lenses have to meet FDA standards of impact resistance for safety. Uh, so they kind of have to show that. So I mean, it's sort of a cheap shot to put that on there as a manufacturing claim. There are special lenses for sports like uh, baseball players, for example, that are really, really shatter resistant. They're made out of polycarbonate. Uh, so if you're somebody who participates in these activities and you're purchasing a sunglass, you, you may be inclined to buy those for your, your safety uh, as a shatter loss. The problem with those is that they tend to scratch more readily. So if you're purchasing one of those, then select one that has a scratch resistant coating that, that can help. The other, the other type of sunglasses that I get questions about a fair, fair amount um, in the comments are transition lenses or photochromatic lenses. These are lenses that darken uh, with bright light and exposure to light. And they are helpful in the choice of people who wear prescription eyeglasses. They offer the advantage in that you only need one pair of prescription glasses. You have a pair of prescription eyeglasses that then transition into your prescription sunglasses. So you don't need to buy two pairs of prescription glasses, prescription eye and prescription sun. You got them both combined in one frame. So more affordable and easier on the user in that you don't have to be switching, switching when you go out from sunglasses to eyeglasses and back and forth. So they are very convenient for, for daily eyeglass wearers. And they also make it so that the, the person doesn't have to think about putting their sunglasses on. So they'll likely, they're, they're more likely to like leave the house with the eyeglasses on uh, and go ahead and have it transition to sunglasses. But transition lenses are definitely an option for protecting the eye. You know, if they say 99% or 100% UV, UV blocking, you know, they, they can be helpful. They, I think for the user, they can be a little bit fussy sometimes because uh, you know the darkening is what you want in your sunglasses to to help help cut down on glare and, and the brightness and, and wincing when you go out in, in a bright environment. And the darkening of the lenses that occurs with exposure to light can be sort of slow. It can uh, be slower in colder environments. And it can actually be blocked to a certain extent in the car. I, I don't think they darken completely if you just get directly in the car and you don't go outside. So if you're somebody who exits your home into your dark garage and gets in your car and then goes out, uh, they may not darken uh, maximally. So that's, that's a limitation to them for you. Uh, but they can offer the UV protection just fine and are a really convenient option uh, and help people to comply with wearing sunglasses on a more continual basis when outdoors. Then the other thing are gradient lenses. I actually have gradient lenses. And gradient lenses are those, they have two types, uh, single gradient and double gradient. I have single gradient. Single gradient uh, sunglasses are those that are dark on the darker on the top half of the, of the lens and light on the, the bottom half of the lens. And this is really helpful for reducing uh, glare from the top, but not obscuring your vision down below. Whereas double gradient lenses are sort of like an Oreo. They have dark on the top and dark on the bottom and then lighter in the middle. Double gradient lenses can be really helpful for people who do certain types of sports, people who are out on boats, doing water sports, skiing, can be really helpful because they will reduce the glare coming from uh, the bright lights above of the, the sun. And they will also reduce glare coming, coming up from, from the water. They are not, however, recommended for driving because they impair your, your ability to see your dashboard, so they're not helpful. Whereas the single gradient lenses, because they are dark on the top and not on the bottom, you can see your dashboard just fine, and they're fine for driving. 
And a mirrored coating does not make a difference as far as ultraviolet radiation coming through the sunglasses. It can um, decrease some of the uh, visible light that comes through and kind of help with, uh, with brightness, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything as far as UV and protecting your, your eyes against UV. Then another claim that a lot of eyeglass manufacturers make, similar to sunscreens, it's like some of the same little tricky maneuvers, is blocks infrared radiation. And this, this is uh, infrared radiation, all right, is uh, radiation that some, some, to some degree comes from the sun and it's basically heat. And the eye can withstand infrared radiation from the, from the sun just fine, and there is no reason to be seeking 100% infrared radiation protecting sunglasses. <laughs> Lastly, the other question that I get is, well, should we be selecting blue blocking sunglasses as well? Does that make a difference? Blue light and the contribution of blue light to ocular health is very controversial and at this time there's not any evidence to suggest that blue blocking sunglasses are helpful for ocular health or the skin around the eyes. Blue, blue blockers or blue, uh, blue light blocking sunglasses usually are amber or yellowish tint and they're really popular amongst skiers and people who do um, uh, snow sports because they can help increase the visual acuity and kind of the bright, bright outward field of a snowy of a snowy landscape, but they don't offer anything as far as protecting your eyes, certainly from ultraviolet radiation. But the last point that I will make is that, as with sun protection and skincare, cost does not equate to efficacy. More expensive is not better. All right. Look for sunglasses that state 99 or 100% UV radiation protection or up to 400 nanometers and get yourself some that you like and will wear, just like sunscreen, that are comfortable, ideally big, bigger is better, ideally wrap around and you know, you have to wear them, all right? They don't function if they're sitting in the case. They don't function if you only put them on in the car and you don't wear them while you're, you're out and about. Um, a lot of people are, get embarrassed about wearing sunglasses, just like wearing, um, wearing a sun hat. They get kind of embarrassed about it. They feel rude if they're wearing sunglasses. But it's protecting your eye health. So, you know, if you're out at an event and you're, you have to talk to somebody, um, you know, resist the temptation to remove your sunglasses because you're removing that protection from your from from your eyes. Yeah, that would be a, that would be one of my major tips is that whenever you perceive that somebody is offended or uh, weirded out by a preventative health behavior, use it as an opportunity to educate them on why you do it and why they should do it as well. And wearing sunglasses is one such behavior as a sunscreen and wearing your broad brimmed hat and your sun protective sleeves. So keep your skin and your eyes uh, healthy and protected from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation. And when people give you strange looks, <laughs> uh, take it as an opportunity to educate them as to why you're doing it and why they should do it as well. But there are many sunglass manufacturers out there. Um, I wear Ray-Ban sunglasses, but you do have to be careful with Ray-Ban sunglasses. Not all of them are 100% UV uh, radiation uh, blocking or protective, 99-100%. 90, so you, you have to be careful and make sure you select the right one. Uh, other sunglass manufacturers that I'm also a fan of are uh, Kenan. Kenan um, makes some very good sunglasses, wraparound types that, that offer good protection. Again, price is not is not the thing. It's more about the ones that you like and will wear. I also saw, um, I'm a fan of, I buy my eyeglasses, my prescription eyeglasses from Warbeak Parker. I wear contacts during the day, but I, I buy my eyeglasses that I wear at nighttime. Uh, from Warby Parker and I've always always been more than happy with the quality of their glasses and the nice thing about Warby Parker is that you can select a bunch of different glasses and they mail them to you and you can try them on at home see what people think and you know see how they fit but Warby Parker has non-prescription and prescription sunglasses that offer uh, UV protection and good sized frames for a decent protection, so that's a good option. Uh, but honestly, you know, you can find, I found 99, 100% 
but uh, UV protecting sunglasses in Walgreens in the drugstore you know over by the sunscreen stuff so it definitely does not have to be expensive uh, it just has to be sunglasses that you will wear in order for them to be effective you know they have to be worn <laughs> otherwise they're not doing any any good uh, but anyways, guys, I hope you found these tips and in this information useful. Uh, thanks for all of the great questions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and sunglasses, and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.